Hello everybody, welcome back to another light novel review. Today I'm talking about volume number one in Ichiro Sakake's light novel series, Blue Steel Blasphemer. This one available only in ebook currently from J Novel Club. So, Blue Steel Blasphemer begins with our main character, Yuki Nari, or just Yuki for short, reliving the last moments of his life in our world. He then sort of blacks out, and when he awakens, he finds himself in a new world. So yes, this is one of those sort of reincarnation isekai-type novels. We then sort of flash forward, and Yuki and this very sort of quiet girl, Dasa, they are traveling together, and they encounter this girl who is chained and being offered as a sacrifice to what is called an Urd god. And an Erd God is basically a animal that has elevated itself beyond sort of the bounds of humans and animals. The only thing that the Erd God doesn't really count on is the fact that uh, Yuki's packing rifles. And so our hero kills the Erd God, but it creates a sticky situation because now the city that sort of relied on the Erd God to protect them from other monsters and everything else. Well, now they have a vacancy for a brand new Erd God, and Yuki finds himself nominated to take the job. Now, Blue Steel Blasphemer is kind of an interesting book. When I first started reading it, I thought, you know, like, this one is written by an author who already has had several light novel series. In fact, I've mentioned a couple of times that one of the main reasons I was interested in this series was because he is the author of The Coffin Princess Chaika, which we haven't had a release yet of that, but uh, I really loved the anime for it. So I was kind of excited to see what the writing style was like and what this story was like. And initially I thought, you know... This is a writer that you can tell has more experience. This is not like a lot of the volume ones that I've been reading, which were the sort of very first officially published works of their particular authors. There's a little bit more in-depth in terms of setting the scene. There's more atmosphere. The writing flows a little better. So initially I had this really positive sort of idea of this book. I also kind of got the impression... I mean, again, I, I'm, I was going by the cover and just sort of the, the main sort of idea of it all. I kind of got the impression that this was going to end up being sort of like a wandering samurai type take, you know, like a Yojimbo, where basically Yuki and Dasa would travel from place to place. And the fact that they had these high tech armaments compared to basically the swords and arrows that everybody else has, that they would continue to sort of go from place to place and the series would sort of follow their exploits. This series is not really like that. In fact, I've been trying to think of all the things that I can actually list that are packed into this volume one without being complete spoilers. It's almost like you have an author who loves mecha, loves isekai, loves harems, loves girls with cat ears, loves... I could go on and on. And it's all in here now some of the stuff the way that it's explained is kind of cool like the mecca when i say mecca it's not really mecca and actually it's very interesting and sort of ties into the overall idea and so it's cool but dude it's like it's like somebody he just tried to figure out how much stuff he could mash all into one story that would encompass at least six different genres of anime, manga, light novels, what have you. And for the most part, it works. And again, I think this was partly because we're dealing with an author who has written other books before. So potentially the little bit more of experience allows this author to incorporate these elements in a way that doesn't seem completely ludicrous. It's also the fact that, and I mean, some of the stuff at first, you sort of go, oh, that's completely, like, how did that even happen? That's so unrealistic. And then as you go through the book, the other thing that I will say that I really like about this book is there's quite a bit of world building. Um, we find out quite a bit, like, there's time dwelt on 
the different religious systems, obviously. There's time spent on, you know, the political systems. And there's a real sense that there is a breathing world sort of behind all of these different ideas. And like I said, at first, a lot of it seems like it's just a mishmash. But as things are revealed, as certain ideas come about, you start realizing, okay, well... I see where you're going with all this and you're getting away with it because of the world building that you're doing. But at some points I couldn't help but feel a little bit like it was just a little half-assed. Like there was just a little, like a little too much thrown in all at once. And some of the stuff, you know, I, (laughs) some of the stuff at first when it happened, I was just like, oh, come on, really? Now we're going here. And I mean, it ended up being not bad. It ended up kind of working like, It's, like I said, it it just, at the time, you're kind of like, when you first encounter this new thing, you're kind of like, really, that, that's, so the girl wears cat ears now, why is that? But then, when you find out that she's almost blind, and that these cat-looking ears are actually devices to heighten her already heightened sense of hearing you know, you kind of buy it. Like, I think that's kind of a, the least spoilery thing because that happens very early on. But it's, you know, like it's that kind of thing where at first you see the picture of her wearing cat ears and you're like, oh, really? We have cat girls. Like this world didn't already have enough stuff. But then when I said like, you know, the author, you kind of buy into it because he gives you this thing where it's like, well, yeah, okay, they look like cat ears, but really what they are is... They're this, and this is why, because this is the character. And so you're kind of like, oh, okay, well, now I now I kind of buy it because you, you've at least built into the world why this is happening other than just she has some kind of weird cat ear fetish, which, I mean, a lot of lesser light novels probably would have just gone there, right? Um, <laughs> so there's a lot of good action sequences. Uh, if you're sort of a fan of guns, obviously, uh, this one gets quite a little bit into the action of guns and how guns work and everything else, because the whole idea is that Yuki was a fan of guns in our world. So when he ends up in this new world, this is why he kind of brings this technology into it. Um, there's, the the harem elements, it's not as overbearing as you might think. And again, it kind of works because of what's going on. <laughs> again, it's 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 hard to say without really spoiling anything. Um but it again, like it's not like a full-blown harem story. That's just this one little component of this much bigger sort of montage of elements. Overall, though, it pretty much works. And even some of the more outlandish elements, as I said, they work because the world building is there. And again, this would have probably failed epically if you had a lesser author, but I get the sense, as I said, from the writing and the style and stuff like that. Here's an author that at least kind of knows that he's throwing everything in the kitchen sink in and he at least has to do what he can to make us buy it. So this one ends like in a very different direction than I thought that it would. And I'm interested to see where it goes from here. Now, taking a look at Amazon and Japan and as well as like the light novel database, it appears there's only four volumes of this series. And I don't know, like, it seems to me like that seems to be it, that there's only four books. I'm not 100% certain. It could be that the author is just taking a very long time between volumes four and putting out volume five. But at this point, On Amazon Japan, there is no listing for a volume five and volume four came out over a year ago. So we'll see. I mean, we'll get there. The way J Novel Club seems to be pulling these things out, we'll be done the four books before the end of the year. Um, So, I mean, if you're looking for something that's a little bit different, but isn't like a invest yourself for 30 volumes worth of story, this could be a really cool series. And like I said, it's a little bit different. Um... I'm interested to see where the story goes from here, like how, where he leaves off, 
there's a lot of different ways that this story could go. And I'm kind of hoping that it, if it is only four volumes, that there's sort of a, you know, a more compact idea here. So we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, I know Blue Steel Blasphemer, it, my, my review is kind of like the book itself, a whole mishmash of ideas and mishmash of thoughts. Overall, it works. Overall, I enjoyed it. I mean, I read through it very quickly. It was, it was a very engaging read. And, you know, you have enough about enough backstory of at least the two main characters, Dasa and Yuki, to make them quite interesting. And they have kind of a fun little dynamic between them. It reminds me a little bit of uh, the siblings in No Game, No Life, just in terms of, like, the sister being very, like, mechanical in her speech, a little bit, you know, broken, a little bit very blunt and to the point. You know, it, it, yeah, I, I'd say that's probably the closest relationship that I would compare it in terms of the light novels that I've read so far. So anyway, Blue Steel Blasphemer, like I said, fairly decent book. I think it would have failed epically in a lesser author's hands, but because of the world building that this author manages to do, I pretty much buy most of it. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm actually very interested to see where this series goes. And I mean, if it's only four volumes, I gotta say, as as easily and quick a read this was, and then you know, as much action and stuff there was, I can totally see myself finishing this series off pretty easily. So those are my thoughts on volume number one of Blue Steel Blasphemer. My next review is going to be on volume number one of How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. This is another J Novel Club title that, um, honestly, like, Volume 2 has already come out, and right now I find I'm trying to catch up with all the Volume 1s that I've missed, uh, whether it be from J Novel, Yen, all, uh, there's a whole bunch. Uh, mostly J Novel, because they have been getting very aggressive with their release schedules. It's pretty awesome, actually, to see the variety of titles that they're bringing out. Uh, somebody said to me, they're like, you remember when a year ago... Like, J Novel Club had four titles, and now they have 17. <laughs> but anyhow, so that's going to be my next one. I've heard some actually really positive things. It is another isekai, but with a bit more of a, a different spin. And like I said, I've heard some good stuff about it, so I wanted to at least check out the first volume of that. So, if you love light novels and you want to see that review, as well as all my future light novel reviews, and you're brand new here... Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you want to check out some of my older reviews, I've got a link to those as well. I really appreciate all of you joining me in this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.